Good afternoon, Chibabis. Minister Makadi. Thank you very much for giving us this time to be able to discuss some pretty tough situational things that we have in this country. But we are very, very grateful that you've opened your home for us to be able to come and speak to you. And I think what I would like to know personally as my first question is that either you are the bravest person or downright the craziest person to take on this portfolio, knowing just how challenging it is. But tell us, why did you take on this role? Well, look, uh, the country, uh, so far as uh, my portfolio is concerned, it's a, in a dire situation. Mm. And uh, there comes a time that uh, one must save their country. And so for me, this is an opportunity. Many people perished to achieve our independence. And I don't think that uh, the work that I'm going to be doing and the challenges that I will uh, um, um, come across during my work are anywhere near what uh, our freedom fighters uh, went through. So this is a challenge, it's an opportunity for me to work for my country and I'm very happy and determined to assure results. My principal of the president expects me to do that and that's exactly what I want. I'm glad you brought up the fact that you know people have worked, people have suffered for the nation to get where, to where it is. It's for the different reason happening right now. People are not working, but people are suffering. National productivity is at an all-time low. What is the plan that your ministry has to end this fuel queue situation that we have? Because at the moment, companies are at a standstill, industry is slowing down, and yet those are the two things that are supposed to bring us out of the chaos. So what is the plan for the ministry to end the fuel queues? Let me start by saying that the resolution of our current uh, challenges is not dependent on any one individual or one entity. Uh, why do I say that? If you look at ZESA, uh, the public owes significant amount of money to ZESA. Commerce and industry, uh, local authorities, the total bill is 1.2 billion. Mm. Um, we still have uh, abuse or misuse of, uh, of power. We treat it like it's the air that we breathe, which we don't have to buy. You don't have to budget for it. This is a very expensive commodity which we import. What is our plan? Uh, we need a plan. When you do not plan, you plan to fail. And we need to understand that we have a, a deficit in terms of power. We need to uh, generate more power. We need to begin to work in a very deliberate manner uh, around issues of renewable energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've just come from a, a, a conference today on energy. Uh, I was in Portugal a few weeks ago uh, uh, where we were meeting uh, investors. Some of them have already been here. So we need to deliberately begin to constrict the deficit that we've got. But we're not just looking at uh, uh, ensuring that we have sufficient power for Zimbabwe. We want to be a, a net exporter of power and mm -hmm. we are currently dealing with ensuring that we have an environment that is attractive uh, to investors for that purpose. Now when you say attractive to investors, uh, when I was listening to your response I was trying to gauge what the actual plan is. What I heard is a lot of ambition, not so much plan. So when you say you want to attract investors, currently investors are looking at how can I establish a business, how can I get the best out of this and knowing that the mantra of open for business is in line with our goals for 2030. Your portfolio is letting us down at the moment in terms of achieving that. This is why people are asking for a plan. So my question now to you is, what is now, have you and the, the Minister of Finance as well as our Reserve Governor been conversing about how to allocate funds to be able to alleviate some of the pressures that are on your two portfolios? Well, I don't think the problem is uh, uh, purely one of uh, finance. Uh, if you look at our consumption of, uh, uh, of uh, power, uh, I think it's reckless to uh, purchase very expensive power and not be interested in how it is consumed. We need to begin to deal with the how uh, and what uh, types of uh, appliances we use. We need to conserve uh, power. And we're coming up with, with with the very uh, direct steps. For example, at my own ministry, we've installed a meter. This is the first time that this has happened in this country. And we are working uh, towards 
uh, a rollout program to ensure that all government departments have got meters. If a government uh, a department doesn't budget for power, it's going to have problems. And if it is budgeted, it must consume uh, power within that context. But with a lot of uh, uh, interventions that we need to do, our approach is going to be extremely disruptive. We're in an extraordinary situation. So we can't pretend that the, the, you know, the situation is normal or that is business is normal. Right. We want to disengage as many as possible of our consumers from the grid so that we lessen the burden on the Minister of Finance and the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe in terms of uh, looking for Forex every day mm -hmm. to make sure that we've got power. As you know, we all uh, our uh, regional partners uh, significant amounts of money. Mm. Uh, Zesa is owed significant amounts of money by Zimbabweans in business, ordinary people, local authorities. As I said, government is uh, paid what it, it, it owes and we expect that if uh, people want to get power, they must understand that we must pay. Payment is the only way that you will, will react to a debt. So you've really been pushing this narrative that you know Zimbabweans, particularly the citizens, have about 350 million that are owed to them, and in total, when you then put local authorities, individuals uh, at large, and etc., it now gets to 1.2 billion. Now, big question that a lot of Zimbabweans have is: we are prepaid customers, right? We pay with a meter. So why is it now that the the brunt force of this? let's get the debt back, is falling on citizens who are paying with the meter, and yet there are lists that are out there of people who are consuming at high rates, people who've got massive debt, and they're not being dealt with. Why the upside down um, starting point to say we with the prepaid are the ones who are going to be at the front, forefront of paying back? Well, I, I can't give you the exact number of uh, consumers or clients that uh, Zesa has. Mm -hmm. This is a si significant uh, number. But uh, the primary point to understand is the fact that uh, the person who is buying on a prepaid uh, basis is still buying power from Zesa, which at the moment is technically insolvent. And who has made it insolvent is the customers. It's not as if there is a separate uh, source of power for people that are pre uh, prepaid. The idea behind prepaid is simply part of uh, our um, process of managing the demand side of, uh, of power. We need to proliferate the distribution of uh, meters so that we manage uh, consumption. It's very simple. When you do not have uh, money to buy mm -hmm. power, you will not have the power. We are busy juicing our phones every day. But when it comes to paying bills that relate to Zesa, uh, we think that uh, it's, it's a free service. If we want to go forward, we need to ensure that we pay our bills. I appreciate that point, and I think that it's a point that everyone needs to understand, and we appreciate you reiterating it. I think what the Zimbabwean people are saying is, why only us? Why is it that we are saying, like quite rightly, like you've just said, it's the customers? But the customers is a very broad spectrum of people. Right, but why is it that when you're now saying people are not paying their bills, people are not doing this and that, people are over consuming in their households? Can you understand that at this time that statement might be a little bit off putting or at least confusing for people? Can you help to expand? What do you mean by customers? Is it just us or there's more people? No, uh, a customer is everybody who uh, is a contract with uh, this mm -hmm. power from it. And uh, uh, I mean, you sign documents, you make commitments, and there's no way where it, where it says that uh, you can uh, get power for free. Right. There's nothing like that. You're supposed to pay. So customers, everyone, and I've made it very clear, this has nothing to do with who you are. Uh, I'm Minister for Energy. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, they are lot shedding me every day. Mm -hmm. I, I've never complained, and I think that is the way it should be. We must all share the pain mm -hmm. so that we understand that we must we have a, a common responsibility to sort out this, uh, this issue. There is no politics about this. Mm -hmm. There is no question of uh, uh, when we load shed, we don't ask for party cards. Mm -hmm. If that was the position, I probably would not be load shed. 
Mm. So I've uh, been encouraging everyone, uh, colleagues in parliament, members of the public, to ensure that let's come together on this issue and resolve it. Members of parliament have a role to play, to speak to their constituencies, encourage people to pay. Because even if people are not uh, switched off, as long as we have the attitude that power is for free, a time will come when Zesa will totally not be able to provide power. And what, what uh, will happen to Zimbabwe at that point in time? So how many houses have prepaid outlets? Because if you're saying that people need to have an attitude of paying, I don't think people don't pay for the electricity, even if it's just putting $10 from a token at a supermarket and so on and so forth. And I think, you know, right now there are some real issues. 15-hour power cuts is, is crazy. There's a lot of services that people are paying for that are going to waste. There are people who are sick, who have insulin in fridges that are going to waste or being compromised because of this. And when we're saying that they're not paying, what are they paying for? How are they supposed to pay? This is what we're trying to extract information from our leaders to say, you're saying we're not paying, but I know that I've paid for my this at a token at a, at a spa. So when you're saying we're not paying, what does that mean? Well, not paying simply means you have not given money to Zesa. And we, we can isolate individuals, but as a collective, this is why we have 1.2 billion. Now, let me talk about uh, prepayment. Hmm. When you prepay, Zesa takes a portion to cover the debt that you owe. Hmm. But uh, you, you must look at this in context. What is the tariff? that we are using. Right. We are the cheapest in the region. Mm -hmm. We are basically giving people free power. We, we can't develop uh, that rate. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is why I'm saying that commerce and industry have a special uh, interest in this. The hardships that they are facing at the moment must propel them uh, to uh, extinguish their debt with the ZESA. But not just them. Local authorities the same. Mm -hmm. uh, me and you need to do the same. And so it's not a, a, an issue about uh, the, the Minister of Energy you know, having failed to do this and that. We simply must attack this issue together as Zimbabweans and understand that um, energy is at the very epicenter of the economy. Mm -hmm. Now we realize it. People in business know um, we have challenges on the diesel side. Uh, the, expensive to run a business. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a businessman today who told me that uh, every week he needs 50,000 liters. Now, what sort of business will uh, provide that uh, business with a, with a profit? It's mm -hmm. completely unsustainable, mm -hmm. but people are struggling to just ensure that the businesses uh, continue to be in place in the hope that the solutions that government is working on come, um, you know, to resolve this, uh, this issue. That is the task that uh, I'm faced with and uh, I'm going to provide leadership in that and uh, I will expect uh, support from Zimbabweans because it's not a problem that uh, is peculiar to myself or to government. Okay, so you're talking about, you're talking about sustainable solutions previously. Why is there still duty on importing solar? in terms of if we're looking at trying to find renewable ways or sustainable ways or alternative ways to alleviate the pressure that's there now. Solar is a viable source, and yet it's so expensive just to bring in the equipment here for businesses or even individuals. So why is there still such a large duty yes, or duty at all? You, you need to understand that we have not uh, pursued the issue of solar energy uh, with the necessary um, effort. Um, which it demands. It's the way to go, it's, uh, it's healthy, and we are looking at all those uh, uh, aspects. But we now need to understand that we've got to create a congenial environment for investors. And this means that we've got to look, uh, we, we, are, we are going to look at practices uh, within the region and beyond mm -hmm. that uh, can entice investors to come. We need to change uh, our attitude towards uh, investors, and this is why the government has taken steps to you know, try and ensure that when people come here, we don't delay them. Now, when you look, uh, when you look at uh, the issue of duty, technically there is 
uh, an exemption on duty. But uh, you are then expected practically to import all the components of a project and at the port of entry uh, declare them as a project so that you benefit. Mm -hmm. Now, we really need to come up with a raft of measures that allow people to bring in solar uh, equipment, want to work on standardization of what equipment should come. We don't want any riffraff uh, materials to come. We also want to deal um, in a big way with uh, this issue of duty by encouraging other investors to make panels, for example, in Zimbabwe, batteries in Zimbabwe, that will help us to create uh, employment for our people, but also help us to expedite uh, execution of solar projects. You're talking about making sure people have the proper solar products to bring in to run solar projects. So you're committed to solar projects. Now there's a particular solar project that's close to Zimbabweans' heart, fairly south of the nation, involving a company called Intratrek Solar. Now the company, the courts recently ruled in favor of Intratrek, but you said that you were personally committed to ensuring that that issue was resolved. What is now happening in terms of that? Look, um, the people of Zimbabwe uh, expect and require me to provide power. Uh, I'm going to be looking very closely, and I've started already, to look at the entire chain of how projects are procured. Uh, but a proper energy framework requires that there should be good governance at our utilities. When you don't have good uh, corporate governance in utilities, you get uh, improprieties happening. Uh, there has been a lot that has happened at ZESA. ZESA is a gold mine. And uh, that's not what it, is. it was set up to be or to do. This was set up to provide uh, power. Now, coming to this uh, project, I'm privy to information. And I also know that the public is bitter and angry around what has happened. I know that uh, there the, the are individuals who have acted in a collusive uh, manner with the stakeholders in one form or another. Now, you talk about judgments. Uh, gov government uh, is committed to respecting uh, court rulings, but government is not committed to allowing people who cause loss or are reckless with the government resources. Government resources are the resources of the people of Zimbabwe. And uh, we will take very decisive action. We are not going to rush. We are looking and studying everything, and uh, at an appropriate time, we will take very decisive action to ensure that individuals who have been implicated, uh, either in this particular project you make reference to, or in any other situation, are made to account for their behavior. If we do not address those issues, uh, uh, as they say, we are not going anywhere. Right. So. One of the things that you did was that you fired the ZESA board almost immediately when you came in. Was that not a bit of a rushed move considering that coming up with a new board as well as actually action steps on how to resolve this parasitic parastatal have not actually been put in place? Is it not more so that you just want to be seen to have been doing something as opposed to actually having a plan on the ground? No, not really. I'm not here to uh, self-project. I'm here to deliver and the people of Zimbabwe will be free to judge me um, on what I've done or what I've not done. I must respond to public concerns. I'm a public official. I can't be a Minister of Energy who glosses over improprieties. And so uh, I also deserve, and the people of Zimbabwe, deserve and demand people in positions who are passionate about the work that they are doing. ZESA is a very important utility and it's unfortunate that uh, we've allowed it to get to the point uh, where it is. We need women and men of integrity and experience to be on the board. Uh, we are not looking for people who are looking for board fees. We are looking at people who will give serious thought to resolution of the challenges that the country is facing 
at the moment. These are immense uh, challenges, and they go to the very, very um, uh, center uh, of our country. And so I, I don't think I rushed at all. I, I was duty bound I, to uh, check what, is, what issues have been addressed in a board. And I want to take this opportunity also to invite commerce and industry to take an active interest in the governance of the utility. We will be looking for board members and we would like our commerce and industry to uh, help us identify people. The idea behind um, uh, relieving the board members of their uh, positions, uh, it's not a personal issue. Uh, I don't, I, I, I'd never met any of them before, uh, and the idea is not to put my friends or, and, or relatives on the board so that I make money. The idea is that we must have a ZESA that is properly managed, mm. that is governance structures, that is able to manage the risks such as Kariba and come up with a plan mm. as to how we are going to deal with Kariba. A board that will take an active interest in the execution of projects. We are talking about this particular project. Money was paid uh, by ZESA. Do we have megawatts? I have a strong appetite right now for megawatts. That's what I want. And that's, that is what will take us out of this uh, current uh, situation. So th that is my expectation. I'm not relenting on it. I'm going to visit uh, that site and uh, physically see what has happened or what has not happened. I expect management at ZESA to resolve the issue mm. and uh, make those who are responsible for this uh, to account for their actions. Now, you're very active on social media. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to get active on social media. Mm. So one of the questions I ask people is, if I can get a certain amount of retweets, mm. I have to ask you, what do you do at your house during a power cut? Now, the reason why we wanted to know this is actually not for fun and games. Yes. It's because when you're talking about finding new board members, mm. when you're talking about governance, yes. one of the key issues citizens in this country have is that our policies and plans and future are decided by people who do not actually live in the conditions that they are trying to relieve. Mm. So if you don't get power cuts or you don't actually get into fuel queues, how are you going to be pressed or even understand how you're going to resolve those issues. So this is at the center of that question. Yes. So what happens at your house during apartheid? Well, um, it's interesting that you ask that question. Mm. When I learned that I'd been uh, appointed, mm. uh, I got that information from uh, my daughter, Melissa, who, and, and I was in darkness. <laughs> I was in bed. Right. Uh, I had a long day, I was extremely mm. tired, I had a headache, and I was in bed. And she came with uh, maybe a WhatsApp message, mm. And there was a letter there which said that I had been appointed. And she demanded that she wanted power now because I'm now the energy minister. So that's the irony of it. Mm. But uh, every day, uh, um, when I get home today, I'm going to be in darkness. So I have to reprogram my affairs to ensure that from 10 o'clock, straight at 10 o'clock, power comes. I start working. And I do as much as I can whilst this is there. Uh, like I said, ZESA will not discriminate individuals or give power to that. I hope nothing like that is, uh, can be done technically. But certainly, I expect that uh, all of us, particularly leadership, must experience this so that we take a, a resolute position to say we don't want this ever to happen again. It's, it's very painful, very inconveniencing, and so forth. Many people call me about uh, these issues, but also speaking about load shedding, there have been complaints that there are no, um, uh, this is not uh, meeting its uh, scheduled times and so forth, but we have a lot of vandalism that has taken place. And in some areas, there's load shedding, and some people come and steal cables, or they steal transformers. Those are matters that we need to address uh, in, a, in a direct way. But also, when there is no power, and I put a little power in that uh, bundles on my phone, um, I do what I, I, I like best. I tweet, mm -hmm. I look at my emails, mm -hmm. I read, uh, I've got to do a lot of 
read everything. Yeah. Um, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I've been microwaved over the past month, and I have a, a very, uh, I think, sound grasp of what the issues are. But I also rely on many people, experts, uh, some who have worked at CESA, academia, and so ordinary people give me information, yeah. and I, I use that for these raw materials for my work. Okay. I think, in conclusion, if you could give us your final remarks on what is the way forward for your portfolio. Um, I'm sure that you have got plans that you're putting in place. I'll be honest, I didn't quite hear a plan today, but I can imagine that with the task at hand, it would be quite difficult to spell it out at this moment. But what assurance can you give us that you know, these 15-hour parkers are painful, but you know this yourself, and those fuel queues are now becoming dualized, you know? What are your final remarks in terms of what can we expect will be the timeline or your hopes for a resolution for these things? Yes, um, the matters that uh, fall under my portfolio, power and uh, fuel, mm. affect people very, very directly and immediately. And uh, I'm treating these matters as urgent and I've uh, made sure that uh, my staff at the ministry understand this. And so planning is very key. Payment of bills, as I said, is key. Payment by government of external bills is very, very uh, important. We need to work together. We need to understand that power is not for free. Insofar as uh, the petroleum industry is concerned, when uh, we're meeting, I met them earlier this week, and uh, uh, we need the regulator to regulate on the basis of information. That's why you are talking about the tracking system. And that for me is a very, very fundamental process that we must go through to ensure that the regulator has got information and we can see who is uh, playing games. But in addition to that, we need also to ensure that there is interagency collaboration. What do I mean by that? Somebody gets money from the uh, interbank uh, market or from the reserve bank, they buy whatever they buy. We need a mechanism to know that this fuel was actually bought. What happened to it, the tracking system will follow the fuel from Ferroca to the service station. As I was uh, coming to this interview, I got a report that there is a service station which is demanding um, um, US dollars. They are not selling. They are actually telling people, go to a run and buy coupons or talk to that guy who is sitting across there. You speak to the guy, he demands $12 for a coupon. So um, I've told the industry that this will come to an end. Mm. Some people are going to lose their licenses. They've got to think about this right now and we're going to set examples. Minister, thank you very much for your time. I think your moniker Chibabes is very well deserved. Um, we look forward to following your endeavors and uh, I'm sure that this won't be the last time that we talk. Let's have some time apart and then we can actually come back and see how far you've progressed. And hopefully by then we'll be doing it in much more pleasant times. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Minister.